Hello everyone and welcome to Shauna Stitches. Welcome back if you have checked out my podcast before and welcome uh, for the first time if you are new here, uh, which I totally understand because it has been a month since I podcasted last. Um, and for those of you who do watch regularly, I apologize for that, but life has been a little crazy. Uh, this is episode number 26. In case you didn't know or couldn't figure it out, I'm Shauna. And just, um, I guess, FYI, it's October 24th, 2017 when I'm recording this. And it's about 12.30 p.m. Uh, I'm coming to you from the Oregon coast, Pacific Northwest area. And uh, although we had three inches of rain the other day, it's actually very beautiful out today. Um, and hopefully my lighting is okay. Um, let's see. I think, I guess I'll do administrative stuff first. Um, I had a cowl going in my Ravelry group, which is um, Shauna Stitches uh, Ravelry or Shauna Stitches podcast on under the Ravelry groups tab. That was for my one sock, two sock magic recipe pattern that's on Ravelry for free. And it was supposed to run through October 31st, but since I'm podcasting today and since I had very low activity in that group, I'm just gonna go ahead and close it today. So um, I had said before that I didn't know what I was gonna be giving away. And um, I guess I still don't really know what I'm giving away. Uh, but first, let me announce the winners. Uh, the first winner is going to be Min74. It's M-I-I-N-7-4. And I'll put that on the screen here. Uh, she's from Singapore. She didn't have her name on Ravelry. So I, maybe it's Min. I'm not sure. But Min, you knit two pairs of socks for my knit along, which qualified. And uh, I'm going to be giving you... Uh, a prize and then the second winner is Helgar uh, which is Helga from Iceland and that's H-E-L-G-A-A-R is her Ravelry username. She also knit two pairs and those were the entire four entries. So why I've announced uh, two winners is because they both did two, you know, two pairs of socks each and I just decided to give them both a prize. So um, before I announce what the prize actually is, I'm going to go into another little admin -y, um, backstory, I guess. So if you guys haven't heard me talk about Lily from Nordic Stitches before, um, I have in some previous episodes. We've done a swap together. Uh, she creates some really beautiful patterns. The most recent one of hers that I've knit is the Inline for Pumpkin Spice Latte Socks, which just have some beautiful pumpkin-y kind of cables. And I knit those in a, um, not very great variegated, but a, uh, you know, where it goes from one color slowly to another color. I can't, gradient. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, gradient orange color. Um, and they turned out really great. It's a great pattern. Well written. So she's a podcaster. She does vlogs. Uh, she's done Vlogtober, I believe, as well as Vlogmas, which is in the month of December for uh, the Christmas time. And she's found herself in a position where she, um, her current laptop isn't working. She cannot podcast, cannot vlog because although she has a working phone, the screen, t screen is too small and she can't uh, see it well enough to edit, which I totally understand that can't be easy. Um, so she was going to quit completely and uh, those of you who know Lily, uh, I know she has a lot of subscribers on YouTube, um, either if you know her that way or if you know her patterns, uh, she's also going to, was going to quit um, producing patterns at least for the foreseeable future um, because no laptop to make them on. So uh, a bunch of us have decided that that just really isn't uh, what we want to happen. We want to still see her in the podcasting world. So we are, a bunch of us have donated money. If you go to her uh, website, which is www.nordicstitches.com, I believe, if you just do a Google search for Nordic Stitches, it'll come up. Um, it's her page for her brand, basically. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see a donate button, I think is what it says, and it takes you directly to her PayPal where you can donate money that way, or you can purchase any of her Ravelry um, patterns and that will help her as well. The last I knew, which was a couple days ago, she was, I think, halfway there. So 
I can only imagine that she's even closer now and that's really exciting. So I know knitters um, definitely pull together their resources and help each other out. So if you at all are inclined to do so, either donate or um, purchase some of her patterns, I know she would really appreciate it. And um, even though it's not benefiting me, it would I would uh, appreciate it. So, um, but certainly you don't have to. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to go back to what I was saying about the prizes for my knit along. Um, Min and Helgar, or Helga, sorry, we're going to say Min and Helga, um, contact me. I want you to go to her Ravelry pattern page and pick out one of her patterns each, as well as any other pattern on Ravelry that you want. Um, I will say for the other pattern, uh, not to include one of Lily's, um, and, and for Lily it's a single pattern, it's not the pattern packages. Um, so one single pattern, um, any pattern, any price, as long as it's a single pattern is fine. And uh, any other Ravelry pattern, uh, $7 or less. So send me a Ravelry message with, um, I guess I already know your usernames, but send it with what patterns it is that you want. Again, one from the Nordic Stitches pattern page and one from any other designer, $7 or less. So um, contact me with that and I will get them out to you. I apologize if you hear snoring. Um, Cody is down here and he is snoring loudly. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking black coffee today in my pink Minnie Mouse coffee mug. And this mug is super special to me because a friend of mine who I was in the Navy with worked at Disney for quite a long time and this was one of the things that she sent me. So I've had it for a long time now. Mm. All right, so that was a very long wordy intro and uh, I'm feeling rusty because I haven't done this in a while, but I think maybe my lips and my brain might be warming up now. So <laughs> let's hope. Um, I have three finished objects this week. Well, this month, I guess you could say. Um, so it's not, sorry about that. Uh, it's not surprising that I have three just because it's been a long time, but I think you will remember seeing um, at least one of these before. This is my, it's just a vanilla sock that I did a um, heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe on in yarn that I over dyed myself. It was my first ever dye experiment. And uh, if you will recall, or if you haven't been here before, uh, I called this yarn my um, Swamp Monster sock yarn, just because it didn't really turn out how I wanted. Originally, uh, my thought process was that it was going to be orange and green. And you can see some orange poked through, uh, but a lot of the orange turned more to a brown color. And there is lots of green. But I actually, despite the name that I gave as kind of like a negative name, I actually really love them. Um, so I guess that is technically one finished pair of um, Halloween socks. Uh, I used a 2.25 millimeter 9 inch circular needle for the majority of this. Uh, 20 rounds of 2x2 two two rib, followed by 90 rows of leg. Like I said, heel flap and gusset, which I switched to a um, circular, like a longer circular to do the heel flap. And I pick up stitches on the long circular and then I join back up in a nine inch circular to continue knitting the foot. And I do a rounded toe with, I don't know what you'd call it, like um, evenly spaced decreases to make a rounded toe. It's the same toe that um, Tommy of uh, Dynamite Trujillo, um, what is her, I can't think of what her podcast is called, but if you search on Ravelry under Dynamite Trujillo, uh, her Pandora socks, you can see which pattern she used for this. I really like it. It is my to go, or my go-to, <laughs> Uh, toe pattern lately and it looks funny on the blocker that's just because uh, my feet are slightly bigger than the blocker but I don't think they're big enough that I could order a bigger size and have it work out so just has to look like I have super pointy toes and just have to live with that because what choice do I have all right so that was number one I have a second pair of Halloween socks 
And these I knit um, for a couple reasons. One is the uh, Lisa of uh, Sock Yarn Swappers and um, yeah, I guess just Sock Yarn Swappers. On Ravelry, she does a group where you buy minis. I have bought several minis from her in the past and uh, she's doing a knit along for what she's calling the Happy Scrappy Cowl or Happy Scrappy Socks Cowl. And uh, you can join there. All you have to do is use a bunch of minis to knit a sock or knit a pair of socks, I guess I should say. So again, these are just a vanilla style pattern with a heel flap and gusset and the rounded toe. I used five gram minis for this almost exclusively with the exception of this really bright orange stripe and the toe tip because um, I was running out of my orange minis. So for the five gram minis, I've mentioned this before, I know other people have as well, so I'm not reinventing the wheel or anything. Um, but what I do is I use a button with two holes in it, and um, for the five gram mini, I would put the center pull um, strand of yarn through one and the outside pull through the other, and just keep evenly pushing this down the strand of yarn or strands of yarn so that by the time I get this all the way to where the, the yarn is done then I know I have exactly the same amount of yarn on each sock. So I, I knit these concurrently, not on the same needle. I did use nine inch circulars for these, but um, essentially what I did was I would knit two rounds on this one, pick this one up, do two rounds on that one, which might seem tedious, but I'll be honest, uh, these feel like they flew. And for me, I don't really care for doing a magic loop uh, on a long circular because I feel like I'm spending half the time messing with the cord. So, I don't know, this might be my new solution to A, not getting second sock syndrome um, and going faster and whatnot, but we'll see. So like I said, they match identically, um, yarn added on, exact same stitch, everything, like they are exactly equal. And um, I'll show you the inside of one of these here for a second. Uh, the way I joined my yarn was to knit over the strands so that uh, for, for several stitches I would, I guess knit over isn't the right way, knit in my ends. There's plenty of YouTube tutorials if you look that up. Um, so that is what the inside of the sock looks like, the little loops that you see there, extra loops. Uh, so essentially on the first round where I'm joining the yarn, I will knit with or knit in the old color. And then the second round when I come back around, I will knit in the new color. Uh, just that way the end that's being woven into that color matches uh, where it's be being woven into and I think will be less likely to um, show through. Like here you can see it looks a little funky. It almost looks like I did um, the eye of partridge stitch here but I think it's just because it's a little tight and um, I I'll be honest I haven't washed or blocked these so once I wear it I'm pretty sure that's gonna come right out of there. And if it doesn't, it's on the bottom of my foot, and I don't really care. So <laughs> there's that. So that's my second finished pair. Both of those were for me. And then I have a third pair of Halloween socks, which are going to look terribly familiar. Um, these are for Glenn. And uh, again, I used minis, five gram minis for these. So I'll just show you one because it's easier, but you know, there's two. Um, so if you guys haven't tuned in before, these are ginormous. Uh, this is a min size 14 wide sock. I knit the, uh, well, I know this is just vanilla, but I knit a 72 stitch pattern for him on um, 2.5 millimeter needles. So that brings my gauge up a little bit, uh, makes it just big enough for uh, the wide foot with the 72 stitches. So needless to say, this is a lot of knitting. The pair took about 110 grams total. And uh, I did, again, 20 rounds of 2x2 two two rib. He likes a shorter cuff than I do, so 70 rounds, followed by a heel flap and gusset, the foot, which was, I think, 107 rounds this time, and a rounded toe again. I'm really anxious for him to wear these and try them because it's the very first heel flap and gusset I've ever knit him. And I'm still just trying to figure out what he likes best. <laughs> it's... Uh, I'm sure 
a lot of you are familiar with this, but you try and ask, oh, what do you like about this one? What do you like about that? And I don't know. I basically get, it's okay, which I'm not complaining. He wears them. He's always wearing the socks I make him. So it's fine. I just would love it if I could have a little more feedback. So I'm really enjoying the heel flap and gusset lately. I like them for my socks, although um, I am saving my socks this year for my box of socks. And uh, so I don't really know, I guess we'll see how I like wearing them. That's why it's nice that I have several different styles in my box of socks. I know for sure I have Afterthought heels um, for this year as well as the heel flop and gusset. And I think, I think I have some Fish Lips Kiss, I think, I'm not positive. Uh, one little quick note I forgot to mention about uh, my heel flop and gusset. I feel like this portion um, is just a little bit small for how tall my heel is. Like maybe I just have a really tall heel. I am very tall, so that's highly likely. I also have a very tight gauge and that may affect things. Uh, but I do, because I use a 64 uh, round sock, um, I've been doing 32. Oh my gosh, I have to wake him up. He's really loud. Hey, oops, you're snoring. Um, I do a 32 row um, flap um, and it just, like I said, it just seems a little short. So I might try 36 next time and just see. I don't think that will hurt anything. It also still seems a bit tight on my instep and I've always heard that the heel flap and gusset is supposed to be the thing that gives you the most room on the instep and to be quite honest, um, the fit itself is not really different over my instep that I can tell uh, compared to a um, fish lips kiss heel. So if any of you have any tips on that, maybe just making it longer will help that. I'd be really curious to know and obviously I will um, experiment myself, but if someone can just, they've already done the research. <laughs> if you've already done the research and you know, that would be so helpful. So thank you in advance. All right. So um, I can't recall which of those. It may be um, that the last two pairs there put me at 12 for my box of socks, and it may be that one of them is the 13th pair. I just don't remember at the moment. But either way, I have reached my number for the box of socks, which is so exciting because there for a while, I didn't think I was going to make it. And uh, this pair here is pair number seven that I've knit for Glenn this year. So not too bad considering these are some ginormous socks. All right, so that is it for my finished objects. I have two whips that I've been working on since I talked to you last, and one of them is very exciting. If you watched my last episode, you saw that I was hemming and hawing between starting the uh, cowl that Glenn bought me the yarn for or the squishy shawl. So literally, as soon as I got done recording, I looked through my needle stash and, excuse me, I was just so certain that I had the right size needles, but I didn't have big enough needles for the cowl. So I did have needles for the squishy shawl and I started my first brioche project. Uh, I absolutely love this project when Mina calls it the squishy shawl. Oh my gosh. Yes, that is absolutely what this is. It is amazing. Um, I have had to put this on hold uh, recently. I haven't worked on it probably in two or three, well, probably three weeks, but um, just holding on to it makes me want to pick it back up because it's so soft and amazing. I'm calling this my right side, but as you know, brioche is kind of interchangeable. Uh, if I spread apart the stitches, that's what that looks like. And this is my technically wrong side, but still looks really cool, I think. The yarn I'm using here is Knit Picks Singles. What is it called? I don't know that I have a ball band here. Uh, Chroma. Knit Picks Chroma. That's what it is. And I believe this is the Pegasus color. And the other is just the natural color. Hey, Cody. Now he's not snoring. He's trying to eat his foot. <laughs> Dogs. Uh, so anyway, I really love this shawl. I have never done brioche before in my life. I have messed up a few times um, 
but for the most part it's been pretty smooth sailing and I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel but I'm gonna post it in the show notes below um, in fact I'm gonna make myself a little note so I don't forget to do that um, but there is a tutorial uh, that um, Tony, stop. there's a tutorial on YouTube that someone did about fixing brioche and it is amazing uh, these stitches are I will say it's not intuitive how to fix it I was gonna say it's not easy to fix but really it's just not intuitive and um, if you watch her video and just follow along it's actually I won't call it easy but it's a lot easier than trying to figure it out on your own um, I think I have notes here on how many pattern repeats I've done so far maybe and maybe not. Yep. I also seem to have misplaced where I put my what row I'm on. So that will be fun to figure out. Uh, but I think I know. So anyway, I cannot wait to work on this some more. And I definitely have more um, brioche projects planned for the future. Um, let's see. What else? I have one other whip that I have been working on. And that is a super secret project for Glenn. These are his blazer socks, which I can't remember. I may have shown this on the last podcast. So if I did show it, uh, you will not see a ton of progress here. But I did do a little bit. Now that I have his other pair of socks done for Halloween, because Halloween was the cutoff date for those. Like, I needed those done because he's been bugging me for a pair of Halloween socks for a while now. Um... So I really want to get those done. But anyway, these will be my main focus uh, for now because I have to get them done by November 29th, which is his birthday. And I had a picture of those up on my Instagram, but he decided to friend my Instagram account and he's not big on Instagram. So the chances are that he will actually check it or slim to none. But I just hope that he didn't already see those. I mean, I know hand-knit socks for me are not like some huge surprise because he's gotten plenty now, I think. I have knit him at least nine pairs of socks since we started dating just over a year ago. So I think that's pretty good considering he has ginormous feet. So, um, yeah. Anyway, it's not a huge surprise. It's just the surprise that, you know, they're blazer themed and it's going to go along with the rest of his birthday presents. So... Hopefully he'll like those. I'm really concerned about that red color bleeding into the white because it butts up right to the white. So prayers and happy thoughts for me when I finally wash those. I'm very nervous. Um, that's it for whips. However, I do want to mention and show an old whip that I had going. Uh, if you will remember, as I try and grab onto it, uh, I was doing these as my Halloween socks and I, you know, right here looking at them, I like it, but what I didn't like and still don't love is sort of the seam here. I think if I were to try and knit these again, I would definitely just maybe not worry about the jog because what I was trying to do was make these jogless stripes. Which just made it look a little funky. And some of it would probably block out. And some of it probably wouldn't be that noticeable when I was wearing it. And who cares because it's on my foot. I'm just not happy with these. And so I'm going to frog it for now. I also just didn't love how the stripes were working up. I think two, either two very, um, either not variegated, but uh, like gradient yarns, two gradient yarns would look good, two solid yarns would look good, but this one that's kind of self-striping weird, the green, or and the orange just don't work, and that's what the, the cakes of yarn look like. So those will be going back into stash, and that's a lot of work, but it's not worth it because I don't think I'll ever pick up the second sock if I were to finish that one ever. <laughs> Um, okay, so, sorry if I'm looking down, my show notes are sitting in my lap today. I have a little bit different setup, in case you didn't notice. Um, I guess while we do that, I'll mention, I finally got all of my, it's not all sock yarn, but uh, actually this section is 
all sock yarn. I got all my sock yarn up and uh, somewhat organized. It's definitely all there by brand and color if I have any that are multiples. And um, yep, I have a lot of yarn. I knew that already, so yes. I'll talk about that a little, a little bit. But anyway, the whole point is that I actually got it put on the shelf because it's been sitting in Rubbermaid tubs for a couple months now, just waiting to get put up there because I was reorganizing my room. It's still not done yet, but it's better than it was. Um, okay, acquisitions. As you know, and I will talk about in a little bit, uh, I am on a yarn diet. However, that does not include gifts. And I am not so manipulative that I have convinced Glenn to buy me something I really want, um, just so I can call it a gift and, you know, not count it in my yarn diet. But he bought me yarn anyway. So as I mentioned just a little bit ago, we just celebrated our one year of dating anniversary, which was really nice. And he totally spoiled me rotten. I can't remember. I don't think I showed these. He got me. Yeah, I did show these because I remember I couldn't remember the name of the stone. Anyway. Fast forward, um, he bought me some yarn. No, I don't think I did show them because I didn't show this. I don't know. Anyway, Tanzanite earrings, as well as some other things that he got me. So he bought me three skeins of yarn. All with sparkle. It's so pretty and sparkly. Uh, this is all Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Socks that rock, sparkle, um, which he got from Twisted in Portland, the yarn shop. Uh, he actually ordered it online, which I was really impressed. So this set is supposed to be for the um, free or fade, and but this set didn't come with the pattern, and I haven't purchased the pattern. And the fact that I really like the find your fade and want to knit another one of those, I just I don't really want to do the free or fade. So what I want to use these for, and somebody who knows, um, maybe could clue me in. I feel like it will work, but I want to use these for the um, Kristen uh, Volenvine. I want to use these for her half Oracle shawl. I'd be worried about yardage for this because it's kind of a, it's a heavier yarn. It's still fingering, <clears throat> but it's a little bit heavier. And I don't think I would have the yardage I dropped a ball down. Let's see. So it's approximately 113 grams, 400 yards. So I've heard people say that they're really running out of yarn by the time that they get to um, the end of the, the full Oracle shawl. And I just really can't logistically think of how I would wear the full Oracle, but I can definitely, I know I would have enough to make a half Oracle as well as I feel like it'd be easier to wear. So, um, yeah, that seems like what I want to do. So I think that comes out November 1st, which is so soon, but I don't think, and I'll, I'll put, I don't think in quotes, cause that could change, but I don't think I'll be casting it on right away. And just because I have some other, um, projects that I want to work on, um, and get finished. So this could be a like beginning of the year kind of thing. And if you give me just one second, cause I dropped the other two ball bands, I'll tell you what colors these are. All right, so one is the Scattering Particles Parade, and I do believe that's this color here, which is so pretty. Mostly cream base with a lot of the mauve burgundy, blue, uh, what else is in here? Green, pink, oh, so pretty, speckles. And again, lots of Stellina. This has 8% of what they call, I think it's Lurex, but it just creates a crazy amount of sparkle. And as I've said before, I still have yet to actually knit with sparkle yarn. Um, so I'm excited about that. Let's see the other colors. Uh, hmm. Now I'm confused. Okay. Maybe I got it wrong. Nope. This one here, I do believe, is Help Us Rhonda, which is a beautiful burgundy color. It's showing up really pink on the screen. It's definitely more... there. That's pretty good. That's not good. <laughs> this is better. Kind of a purpley burgundy sort of color. 
And the third skein is one that I actually already have in my stash. And this is uh, twist, the Twisted Yarn Shop. It's their 10th anniversary special yarn that um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts created just for them to match their uh, colors of their logo. So anyway, I think that will be very beautiful, whatever I knit it in, but I think it will make a really nice looking oracle, half oracle, whatever she's calling it. I forgot to mention, I guess that is kind of acquisitions what's up next eventually, uh, but I forgot to mention uh, the two next projects I'll be casting on, and both of those are going to be Christmas socks. I think I'm going to use the same pattern for Glenn socks and for my socks, I think. And the one I'm thinking is the Country Roads pattern, which is by Nordic Stitches. And obviously you know why I want to support her shop. So if you will remember back a while ago, I dyed, well, I over dyed a second skein of yarn for uh, Christmas socks because I didn't have any Christmas colors. Shocking that in all that, I literally have zero Christmas colors because red's just not my thing. So I over dyed this multi green and cream colored skein with some red. That's all I did was add red. And yeah, I'm really curious to see how this is going to knit up. Uh, the Country Roads pattern, which I will put a picture in here, is um, mostly just a vanilla sock and it has a cable that runs down the outside of each leg. So obviously the patterns will be just a little bit different than each other. But it looks like a small and pretty simple cable, so I'm hoping so. Uh, I had no problems at all, at all with her um, cable in the inline for pumpkin spice latte socks, so I think I'll be able to handle it. So that was my yarn. I guess I told a little fib uh, because the yarn that I am going to use for Glenn socks, I'm calling it Christmas yarn, and it is from my stash, so it's a bit of a reach. But this is, um, why am I blanking? Patton's Croy. It's Patton's Croy. I can't think of the color name. It's a really popular uh, color. So I'm sure you guys have probably seen it before. But I just don't remember what it's called. Clover Colors. That's it. And there is, it's not wanting to focus. Yep, it's still not wanting to focus. Well, hopefully you get the gist. Um, probably an Instagram search would be better anyways. That's kind of what it will look like knit up. Again, I want to do the um, Country Roads pattern for these as well. It'll be the first cabled sock that I've ever knit for Glenn, so hopefully he likes it. And uh, for both pairs, I'm thinking of trying yet another heel, which isn't really... Um, a super different heel but I want to do the all garter version of the fish fish lips kiss I think so far that's the heel that Glenn likes best not the garter version but the regular fish lips kiss so I might be going back to that for him but we'll see if he likes the heel flap and guess it there's so many moving parts you know diff different portions of the sock and, and figuring that all out so that's what's coming up next. I feel like I should change the name of my podcast to Shauna Socks or something like that because that is pretty much all I knit. And um, I'm fine with that for now. That could change, I suppose, in the future um, if I guess I have too many socks. Can you have too many socks? I don't know. I guess I only have two feet, so. All right, um, I, I'm gonna switch back now to acquisitions. And uh, I didn't buy any yarn. Don't get any uh, wrong ideas there. But I did buy two uh, tools for yarn. And that is back there. I think you can kind of see there. Um, don't mind all the whips. But right there is my Amish. What do you call it? It's a, it's the Stanwood Amish ball winder. Or no, ski, um, Amish Swift. That's it the Swift. Um, and then the other thing that I got is, again, um, don't mind all the yarn and junk, but uh, right there, the Stanwood ball winder. And I went for the extra large version, which I love. Um, 
it gave me a little issues at first just because um, I didn't pull all the pieces out of the box and I didn't put that second like really long arm up there so I was having to like hold the yarn up here and wind it and I didn't understand why it was being weird but it's user error of course so it works great uh, I really do love it it's a huge improvement over my small stand wood that one was nice um, but I've just had it for well, I got it when I was crocheting a lot um, so I bet I've had it for at least five years, probably longer. Yeah, longer, maybe seven years. So it definitely, um, it did its time well. The foot of it, the part that hooks under the table was actually crumbling apart and breaking away. So every time I would have to put it on a table, take it off a table, it was each time more and more little pieces were falling apart. So it, it's not long for this world. I did keep it just in case, but I don't think it's going to last too long. Uh, what else? All right. So I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, the very last little tidbit here, I will say that, um, I guess I should say at least the last bit of knitting stuff is the update on my yarn diet, my not buying yarn. And, uh, it's been 77 days since I last purchased yarn, which is huge for me. I mean, seriously, I've already showed you. There's a lot of yarn there, a lot. All these ones that sort of match here, these are all ice yarn. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, uh, they send a minimum of four skeins per color, which is why I have a lot. Uh, Cause of course I need every color. I mean, that makes total sense, right? <laughs> so 77 days, I have not bought yarn. I have 15 skeins out of my stash. That does not include the minis. I thought for a minute that I would take a, you know, a technical skein out of stash uh, because I used enough to count as a skein, but because I don't count my minis as skeins, although I don't have like a total count of how many skeins of yarn I have, I'm just not going to count it as a skein out. So, um, yes, 15 skeins out and 11 projects finished. So just 11 projects finished in the last 77 days is really good for me. Um, yeah, cause I haven't had a ton of knitting time lately. And so now I guess I'll switch over into the stuff not about knitting. Um, yeah, basically <clears throat> I have a promotion at work, which hasn't quite started yet, but I went away for training on the promotion. Um, so I had to spend two weeks in Salem, Oregon, which is the capital of Oregon, if you didn't know. And um, surprisingly, it's not the most fun place <laughs> to hang out, which is fine because I'm not there to hang out really anyways. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just feeling super stressed out. And I don't think it's just that. It could have something to do with the weather change. I'm not totally sure, but just stress. That's what I feel right now tons of it. So I didn't get a ton of knitting time while I was away at training, but I did get more than I had thought I was going to, um, which was nice. That's where I actually, um, I didn't finish my pair of the scrappy socks while I was at the academy, um, or at training. That's what I, yeah, I went to the academy. So, um, I didn't finish those there, but I worked on them a ton. And then I actually worked on Glenn's pair of socks there also. And yeah, I just have an upcoming um, schedule change at work, which is going to be something very new to me. I have worked nights almost exclusively for pretty much the last nine years of my life. And I'm about to go to, like, well, I'm getting heart palpitations just talking about this. How ridiculous is that? Um, <laughs> seriously. Uh, so I'm going to be going to day shift. I, I don't know why I'm getting emotional about this. It, it's not like an emotional thing, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if I know how to day shift. I don't know how, if I know how to, um, day shift people. I, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. Obviously I can talk to people. It's, it's not a big issue. Um, but you know, having a new job at my work uh, is a little bit stressful. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot more intense, um, high pressure job. Uh, basically the same thing I do now, but bigger, um, without going into a lot of details. So 
yeah, it's a little scary and um, life's just been a little crazy. I can't remember if I told you guys or not, uh, maybe before, but uh, my Chihuahua Rudy, who I think is sleeping at the moment, uh, he's been having problems with his rear left leg and he holds it up in the air. He's in a lot of pain. We took him to the vet uh, a while back and like I said, I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but um, he isn't walking on the leg. They said rather than spending a bunch of money right out of the gate, uh, you know, here's some pain pills, take him home, see if it gets better. Um, anyway, it's not getting better, so I have to take him back to the vet. I think that's probably going to happen next Wednesday. And that's going to entail x-rays and um, hopefully good news. I don't know. Surgery is scary to think about. It's also very expensive to think about. Um, but obviously I don't want him in pain. So we'll see what they say after we get a little bit more information. But makes me sad. <laughs> I'm not ready for my dogs to get old yet. Um, what else? I can't think of anything else. So anyway, you guys, uh, sorry for feeling a little rusty on this episode, but thanks for sticking in there with me. If you have, um, I'm just going to try and put up on the screen where you can find me, uh, on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, the, and YouTube, obviously I hope you're, you're watching me here on YouTube. Uh, but everywhere it's Shauna stitches, but I will put in the usernames here somewhere. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you hopefully sooner than a month. Bye.